Steve Martin, Martin Short, thank you so much for joining us. Our pleasure, pleasure to be on the biggest show in Australia. This That's is a big deal. Uh, I call it flagship. Flagship show, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, you'll be pleased to know they've sent the interviewer with the least experience. Uh, this is only well, my... we know. Yeah. <laughs> so just, you already got that impression. Yeah. So I just want to... Well, you've got the... the handshake the, on. You've the got weak the celebrities handshake. with the worst celebrity aura. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So just now that I've been honest with you, you know, yeah. any faults of the interview, uh, you know, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Genuinely I'm untalented. Mm -hmm. um, You're working one, your way up. <laughs> thank you. One of the things I love about you guys is that your material is so quotable. And I just wanted to know if there's a, do you have a secret to joke writing? And also, what are the jokes that you love? What are the, the jokes that you love to quote? Well, you know, we actually do a segment in our show where we quote other comedians. We give them credit. But, you know, it's interesting to comb through other comedians' lines through the years and try to find the, not, only, not the best one, because that's the one that'll work for, in this moment at the at the time and that's really fun but we don't think about quotability we just we just we'll look at jokes and we'll go I like that let's try it and then sometimes it's a complete surprise you go I didn't think it was gonna work that well and sometimes you're convinced it will work yeah. and of course it doesn't <laughs> well that's more you yeah. <laughs> is there ever a joke where you feel like the audience is wrong they were wrong not to laugh they can't be wrong <laughs> no they're never yeah, wrong. Yeah. they're never wrong we had we were on the plane and I had uh, I said hey would this be a funny opening line I hope you like conceptual. And he says, that could be, it. and he, he emailed it to me. Now, we would never do that, because I know it won't work. I could, just from your reaction, I could tell <laughs> it's not going to work. And it's kind of hard to But part. that's what we're doing all the time. If something is funny in a conversation or a dinner, mm -hmm. I will say, oh, that could be good. I'll send a text, mm -hmm. CC both of us, and then we'll look at it and go, mm. Mm. Or we put it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the line I always quote of yours is the one about what Donny Osmond taught you. Um, if you can remember that line. Yes. Yeah. What is that? Um, Donny Osmond said about doing an award show, always leave the audience wanting less. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is someone that you have made laugh that really meant something to you? Gee. Well, I, when I make Marty laugh, that's, a, that's very good, but I know you're, you're talking about a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Johnny Carson. Yeah. Are you familiar with Johnny Carson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was so great. If you made him laugh, you just felt so good. I made Barack Obama laugh. You did? Oh. Yeah, so that was pretty gratifying. Do you remember the line? But did you say anything or just walk in the room? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, I was on stage, and he was, it was at a private thing, and, and he was just, but I found myself going, oh, my God, there's, there's the president laughing. That made <laughs> yeah, me happy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but your, your cast and appearances, both of you, I mean, he was such a big fan of yours. And you did become sort of friends. We were, friend, we were friendly, and he had had us over for dinner at his house. And uh, I, I just felt so, I, I mean, I was actually always nervous around him. You know, that, that thing you just can't get over. He said, I can't believe I'm with Johnny Carson. It's like how you must feel. <laughs> yeah, but don't. Oh. But I remember, you know, I, we were both good friends with Mike Nichols. And oh, yeah. I knew Mike oh, yeah. Nichols for over 20 years, but I was always pinching myself when I was with yeah. him saying. Mike Nichols said to me once. There's well, someone who, if you made him yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah, he, he made, made him made laugh. Him he would yeah. cry. He would dab yeah. his damn designs. And uh, one time he said to me, and he was so right. He said, I was talking about a movie he was doing, and he goes, you always aim high in something low. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly right. But your first casting appearance like, is magic. I'm sorry, I'm sure yours was too. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to but it is like so clearly thrilling for you and for him that you just came out and killed. And it was pretty exciting because I had watched him my whole life. Mm. You know, and now I'm 38. And he's doing that thing I've seen him rubbing his eye and <laughs> doing that cackle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, you know, he loved comedians. Him. You know, he loved Don mm. Rickles. He just laughed. Why are we talking about him? What about us? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Dave Letterman, you get over here. Yeah, Dave mm. Letterman is a yeah. big, uh, good one. Get him laughing. Mm. You get Fallon and Colbert and all those shows. Yeah, through your, you know, your pay TV and your, yeah, right. I you see. Know, your piracy and all sorts uh -huh. of things. But yeah, it's it's around. Or if you stay up till you know half past midnight. Right. Know, but that whole thing of the late night show being so late, that's really, you know, Australians are most of us are in bed by nine o'clock. It doesn't really work for well, us. You can tape things now, you know. 
I should get onto that. Yeah. Now. Thank you. I'm going to send you a little brochure. All right. <laughs> we keep going? Okay, cool. Um, Why are you getting... <laughs> yeah, just, I'm not expecting it at any moment. Yeah. I'm expecting a real interviewer to come and say, I've, I've got it from here. Um, yes. One of the things I love about your persona on stage is that you are simultaneously show business personalities and you're parodying showbiz tropes at the same time. Who are the performers, for better or for worse, who have influenced those persona? Well, for me, you know, because I, I started doing this a long time ago, kind of show business parody, like a bad comedian. I don't even know what it was. I don't know how to describe it. But it was all basically a lounge singer, that vegas -y attitude that I found hilarious. And I don't really have people in mind, you know, Frank Sinatra was actually good, but there were, I mean, everybody was good. It was like, uh, it, was, it was like a big lounge act, you know, like. Uh, well, I mean, it was, you know, there was an Steve era. Gourmet and, uh, but I love Steve. Them. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, Steve, part yeah, of the Steve thing Lawrence. is that when, when you, whether you're satirizing someone or impersonating someone and even being kind of mean about them in your impersonation, you had to have like them because why are you even looking yeah, at right. them and mm -hmm. paying attention and learning how to do it so Sammy Davis I used to do a little quick parody of him the candy man yeah, can no, you know not like that but oh you didn't well not that good oh. <laughs> yeah I did it uh, I did a Vegas act in uh, in like uh, an entire Vegas act in like one minute so I talk about this I would go I gotta be me I gotta be me and uh, I when I did it on the Tonight Show the first time Sammy was on the show he was on the, a guest and when I started doing that, he started laughing so hard, he fell off the sofa. They happened to cut to him. And it was like a big moment, because, wow, you made Sammy fall off the sofa. And then later, I realized Sammy always <laughs> fell off the yeah. sofa. <laughs> that was part of what you'd satirized. I mean, mm. Sammy Davis was a perfect example of someone who was this massive talent. A massive but, talent. But oh. falling off the sofa, you <laughs> then translate it into a sketch or yeah. a character, you know. I'd love to imagine the moment when he chose chose that. That's my that's my bit falling off the sofa. <laughs> yeah, he was. A, well, he was letting you know he's laughing, enjoying yeah, you more yeah. than any human being. Yeah. Did you ever see Tony Newley perform? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. I was a writer on the Smothers Brothers comedy when he came on. It was he was brilliant. And you listen to those songs; they're great. Mm. What kind of fool am I? Should I do my Tony Bennett? Yes, please. Ooh, Tony I, Bennett? No, no, Tony. Uh, Tony Newley. Newley. Yeah. What kind of fool am I who never fell in love? I knew you had it in you. Yeah. Yeah. What's the other great song you did? Who can I turn? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Sammy now. It's all <laughs> yeah. morphing into one. Well, you know what I've noticed? And maybe, maybe not here, I don't know. But when they, you see uh, like a headline the next day, like after Saturday Night Live, they'll say, uh, so and so mocks so and so. And I go, when did it become mockery? It's satire. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just a nastier word that you're mocking someone. Right. Rather than satirizing mm -hmm. them. You get Saturday Night Live here. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kate McKinnon does Elizabeth Warren, who's running for presidency. Mm -hmm. It's not mocking. It's mm -hmm. just genius yeah. But they want to call it yeah. mocking mm -hmm. for some reason. So what you were saying is that you really actually had a deep affection for Doug Henning. You actually... I <laughs> love Doug <laughs> Magic is illusion. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Martin, you last... Sorry, Marty. <laughs> Marty, you last performed in Australia in 2011. Steve, did you ever perform in I've never performed. No, right. I came here in 1990 to work, in 91 or something like that, to, to work on my play. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything you can say about Australian audiences that you've observed? Anything you can warn Steve about? Well, I have always found them to be um, very generous. And it's almost like they're appreciating the fact that you've traveled so far. But also... <laughs> Um, I'm Canadian, so Canadians and Australians have us, they are like cousins, mm -hmm. and they love to laugh, and so I, I've always found them similar. And is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to doing or seeing while you, while you are here? Yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> I thought you meant uh, doing in our show. I'm, oh, I'm very no. anxious to do our show, and I'm very anxious also to play, because we have a great band, mm -hmm. and I play the banjo, and I feel like... I know there's some bluegrass uh, going on in uh, Australia, but I think it'll be a real surprise to a lot of people because, you know, we do it in America, and the, the band never fails to get a standing ovation. So, right. um, But there's going to be, yeah, things I'm going to do. My, my family's going to come, and we're, we're looking for a koala bear to hold. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but that's more what I want to do. <laughs> sure. And uh, well, The first time I came here, and I, 
experienced a koala. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, your Christmas parties are legendary. Steve, you've been to... Yes. Oh, some of these. please. He killed them from year to year. Can you recreate some of those? Because obviously these are the great Christmas variety specials that have never been filmed. <laughs> what can you recreate of those I don't experiences? I remember what I... Everybody would either be spontaneous or well rehearsed. Yeah. I would always be well rehearsed. And some of the funniest things were uh, people who were just being spontaneous. I don't even know if that Chevy thing translates. Try it. Well, okay. So, you know, I work on my thing and I do well, it. Well, hold on. The, the setup is that he, you were playing Auld Lang Syne and he, you had said you worked on it for 10 months or something. Yeah, so. I worked yeah. on it for 10 months on the banjo playing Auld Lang Syne. And then Chevy got up and we knew he had, he had no preparation because he never <laughs> prepared. And he said, I'm a little sad tonight, he said, because uh, my family was killed. <laughs> and we all go, oh, oh. This guy. And he says, who would have thought a plane would land on a boat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's funny or not. No, but yeah, I remember the next it. day you phoned me and said, this is fascinating. It was the oh. same uh, reaction from the crowd, yeah. except one took 10 months and one <laughs> took 10 seconds. Right. Yeah. And who took it the most seriously? I don't think anyone took it. It was really just, you know, people getting up. And Tom before. Hanks took it pretty seriously. Tom, he would always do something very yeah. good. Yeah. There was a lot of musicians who had work on stuff to play. Steven Spielberg played the clarinet one year and worked for a month on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, you've hosted the Oscars three times. Yes. Twice by yourself, once as a duo. Have you ever, have there ever been discussions about you two possibly doing it as a duo? And would you? That's very interesting. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> And no, you know, it's never come up. I can't imagine a worse phone call, in the sense that that, for me personally, I feel oh, I guess because I've never done it, should I do it? And then I think, oh my God, it's so much work. It's so and the and and, the, and they usually just attack you. Yeah, attack, you got to you're, you're gonna be attacked. How so. much preparation would you put into it? Oh, months and months and months. I mean, if if they ask me to host it in late November, that day I would start working on material for March. Is it one of the most stressful things you've had to well, do? Well, I had three different experiences. One was very stressful, but you know, you're, you're a little, you're, that, it's not nerves, it's your, your body kind of turns cold. And you realize you're standing backstage on a big stage, the curtain's down, and you're just standing there all by yourself, waiting for the curtain to come up. And it comes up and then everything turns out to be fine. And then the second time I did it, I was not as nervous, but I was a little nervous. I still, you know, oh, what am I doing? I'm going to go out, it goes fine. But the third time I did it with Alec Baldwin, and I kept waiting to get nervous. And I never got nervous, and I had a great time, and I realized I had a partner. Right. And that's kind of like right. uh, working with Marty, you got a partner. Mm. <clears throat> but th there's no temptation there? Is it, does it feel like a, uh, an itch to, to scratch? Because I feel like this is the, the great Oscar hosting duo that has never been. Ah, uh, that's very nice. I don't know. I mean, would you, is this something, to be honest, well, I'll tell you something you want to do? I certainly think about it, but I actually get a little offended because here you're hosting one of the biggest TV shows in the world. You're talking about the show I'm hosting? Yes, I'm right, part exactly. of? Yes, yeah. and, <laughs> But they don't pay. And you realize like I'm spending five months on this and you know, they, they don't Isn't pay. there a gift, a gift a box of gifts? A <laughs> gift, gift box. I always feel, gee, it seems like we're, you're hosting one of the biggest issues. You get paid a they little. They don't pay? No. It's minimal. What, yeah. like, Scale. The thing is exposure. Is that the thing? Yeah, that it's the honor of. Oh, so, sure. so, some, someone got talked you know, yeah. people into that one. The, the honor of being slammed by variety. Yeah, I go, the well, day. let's see. The producer gets paid. Everybody gets paid. <laughs> Everybody's getting paid. The writers get paid. But, uh. so there's almost no upside to yeah, this job. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you thought about now that you are a duo, you've been doing Mm -hmm. version of this show for what, four years, more mm -hmm. or less. Yeah. Have you thought about other things that you could do as yes. a duo? We have a Absolutely. few things in the works, but they're not really prepared to be talked about. There's like a couple of TV um, things mm -hmm. that we're working on, but that doesn't mean they'll get done. You know? Would you do a two-hander? Would you do a play? Would you do The Sunshine Boys or The Odd Couple, something like that? Yeah, that's what you really do. You go from The Odd Couple and then just <laughs> within a fortnight you are doing Sunshine Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know, the eight, what we have is an ideal schedule. We will do three or four shows a month. And then we might take seven weeks where we don't do anything. You know, New York is eight times a, a week and you have no life. Mm -hmm. 
uh, other than that. I so a, I have a child. I yeah. just can't be away that long. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. And who could understudy you? That's Well, that's kind of true. <laughs> No, I I can think of plenty for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Steve, what is it like being on the receiving end of a Jiminy Glick inquisition? Well, you know what? It, it's actually a tough thing to do because when I, when I did it with your show, you don't know quite how much to say because it's his comedy. And, you know, you think, am I going to... You know, if you talk too much, you kind of kill off what he's doing. And if you don't say anything, then you're not contributing. So it's a fine line mm -hmm. to know exactly what to do. But you know how to handle it. You usually interview, no, you used to interview mostly celebrities, don't you? I was going to yeah. say none, yeah. But, um, I said to Steven Spielberg, when are you going to do the big one? <laughs> the one that connects with the people. <laughs> there is one interview that Jiminy, and just to clarify for viewers, Jiminy Glick, sort of a terrible interviewer like myself, yeah. um, that there's one interview that I think you did that you've not released. Has that person died yet, and can you tell us who it is? No, he hasn't. Okay. She hasn't. <laughs> oh, it hasn't. Oh, yeah, somebody got mad. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, if Jiminy could interview Martin Short, what do you think he might say or ask? What uh, happened? <laughs> we, do, we do a joke on our show sometimes where I say, now Marty, I'll be, we're talking to you, I'll say, uh, everybody has a slump in their careers, <laughs> and I'm just curious, what happened to you between 1972 and 2012? <laughs> I know you interviewed Jerry Lewis as Jimmy Glick, and Jerry yes. Lewis was a big yeah. influence for you. Your sketch, Jerry Lewis, live on the Champs-Élysées, was... Quite cutting. I mean, very affectionate. Because it was. <laughs> had he seen it? Did he? Did you talk to him about it? Do you know uh, um, that I did that in 1982, and then 1990, I was asked to interview Jerry. They were releasing all he and Dean Martin's shows for Disney out on a DVD at the time, and they wanted a running interview throughout the whole thing. So we, they just let cameras go for a couple of hours, and I was nervous. I'd never met him because I thought maybe he hates me. And in the middle of it, he said. Um, didn't you do me on the telethon? I said, no, no, I would never satirize you on the telethon. It was, I was, it was a Scorsese film live from the Champs Elysees, and he went, <laughs> that's funny. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I don't think he'd seen it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, now you. By the way, I don't <clears throat> think that's mean. I don't think it's mean at all. It just you just exaggerated him. It's there was one section that was. <laughs> 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 when he's a little sailor boy, he's out <laughs> lecturing the audience about. <laughs> For Cuck, the studio executive. Yeah, yeah. We run a little bit of that clip on our show. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. You've appeared in four films together. Five. Five. Five, five sorry. What's the, I, well, so, uh, uh, Prince of Egypt. The, well, uh, the, Jimmy Glick and Lala Wood. Um, oh, Prince right. of okay, Egypt, yeah. uh -huh. Father of the Bride 1, 2, yeah. and Three Amigos. There is another film which you were supposed to appear in together. What is the great lost David Lynch film, Once uh, Alive Once a Live a Bubble? Tell us about that. Oh, well that, I, I don't know why you even, you know, this was a, it was a, a, David Lynch wrote this with, with a partner, I can't remember his name, wrote a masterful script called Once Alive, a Bubble. This was like in the early 80s, 80, 89, was it really? And wait, were, were you offered it? Uh, <laughs> yes, we were going to do it together. Oh, really? I didn't remember that. Well, I don't and, know uh, but anyway, it was a great script, but it never got made. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I dig it out every once in a while. I do remember from the luncheons, we had two different luncheons. You were there? And <laughs> I remember he was going out with Isabella Rossellini. Ooh, yeah. And I remember yeah, just sitting there saying, even the way she moves her hands are beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, hard-hitting part of the interview where I've done, okay, I've yeah, done a lot of hitting. research. Into this. Yes, and this is specifically for you, Marty. Mm -hmm. Now, in your memoir, you stated that in 1976, you went and saw Shirley MacLaine. And uh, you uh, were so enamored with her performance. And you went, I think, stage door and sort of uh, had a sort of embarrassing experience. Right. Uh, and, but in your first appearance on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, you told that same anecdote you said it was Richard Burton. Right, because I couldn't do sure. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. What time you heard this quote, never, get, never, get tr never let truth get in the way of a good story. That's right. Yeah. 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 But you told it with such conviction. You said it was, you were seeing him in Camelot. And it was well, I could do Richard, you see. <laughs> Old murder. Yeah. It was a beautiful lie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that Bowfinger is maybe the greatest comedy film 
ever made. Thank you so much. I because it's kind of that. underrated. And, and yeah. wasn't Eddie Murphy the most brilliant he ever was? He was just great. Yeah, I think it is, from my perspective, his last great comedy performance mm -hmm. that we've seen. Um, why do you think it didn't resonate as, as well as you know, we think it should have? You know, a lot of these films are, are have need time mm -hmm. you know, to percolate. And uh, you know, they come out. It's like Three Amigos was uh, second to Golden Child. You know, it wasn't a monster hit. It was just did okay. And then suddenly, like you know, 20 years later, we get a call from England that said, we're doing a tribute to Three Amigos on the cover of so-and-so. We go, what? <laughs> we didn't even know. <laughs> and uh, so it has this uh, time bakes mm. these things into determining what they're, how they're regarded, mm. you know? And I always liked Bowfinger. I thought it was, you know, there's some really good jokes and the performances and the, yeah. the idea of the story and Frank Oz directing. Mm. And Christine yeah. Baranski is so, so fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I know you worked with her in that uh, Encore's production right, of Promises, Promises. Promises. Yeah. There's a little clip of that on YouTube, and it's just hysterical. Oh, it's really? Good. So I wonderful. Yeah. Go check it out. Yeah, and good, I, I good, some got stuff to there. check my career. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite line in Bowfinger is, but this would make no sense, because uh, you have kind of the story as one of the actors goes, Kincaid! <laughs> <laughs> it is, again, one of those great quotable. I mean, there are that whole sort of thing about explaining how much a film costs. You know, that's ten percent of the nut cash. Yeah, yeah. If a movie costs. There's also a line. Can you tell that you just attach <laughs> on for for lunch and I'm talking to Heather Graham, and I said, I said, I'm so upset with you. And she says, Why? She says, Well, you slept with Jeff. And she goes, So? And I said, Well, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> I think for me, it's the, it's the great, sometimes before doing a take of something, I'll say, uh, remember you're, um, you're in love with him, but you, but you want to save the planet, and go. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Just, <laughs> such a specific yeah. note. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't think we'd be given this much time, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Yeah. Uh, Martin Short, Steve Martin, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for the memories. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Memories? Thanks for remembering. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.